Hello everyone. The book of Isaiah is the first book containing the writings of the prophets in the Bible. While it is traditionally believed that the entire book was written by one man, Isaiah, and at different times in his life, it is also widely accepted that differences exist in theological ideas and themes, historical settings and perspectives, and language especially the choice of vocabulary and literary style in the latter part of the book. These altogether point to more than one writer known as the second and third Isaiah or the disciples of Isaiah. Friends, the real and historical Isaiah, which in Hebrew means the Lord is salvation, was the son of Amos and also the brother of Amaziah the king of Judah at the time, according to some ancient Jewish traditions. Therefore, Isaiah was of a royal descent and lived about 700 years before the birth of Christ in Jerusalem, the capital of the kingdom of Judah. He was the first of four major prophets along with Jeremiah, Ezekiel and Daniel of the Bible. Furthermore, he was best known as the Hebrew prophet who predicted the coming of Israel's Messiah and Savior. Friends, the content of today's text, taken from the 43rd chapter of the second part of Isaiah, shows that it was written during the exile or forced detention of Israelites in Babylonia, about 150 years after Isaiah's death. Friends, according to the scriptures, Several times during the period between 607 to 586 years before Christ, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon sent his armies against the kingdom of Judah, ransacked the city of Jerusalem and the temple, and killed many people. Moreover, many thousands of Jews were taken captive, including the king, his mother, wives, officials, military leaders, and the finest and brightest young skilled workers and thousands of others. Only the poorest of the land were left. As a matter of fact, all these things happened as the Lord had forewarned through Isaiah. Friends, while in exile, the Israelites considered the exile as God's just punishment for their sins and saw themselves as being abandoned by God and felt that there was no hope of returning to their homeland. However, there was no question of God ever forgetting His covenant with them. They belonged to Him, for He had chosen them. Hence, through Isaiah, He wanted them to know that they would soon return to their homeland and rebuild their nation. Nevertheless, it was necessary for them to know about their Lord, to recall the great things He had done for their ancestors, and learn to turn to Him in faith and repentance. Friends, in today's first reading, we read just exactly that. First, the Lord introduces Himself as the Lord who makes your way. Friends, Isaiah proclaims, Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Friends, Israelites passing through the sea is one of the most exciting events recorded in the book of Exodus. It occurred around 1440 years before Christ and about 700 years before the time of Isaiah. Friends, According to the scriptures, the descendants of Jacob had lived in Egypt for more than 450 years, but 400 years of which were spent in slavery. When they pleaded to the Lord for help, he sent Moses to lead them out of Egypt. But the Pharaoh at first refused to let the Israelites leave. Then the Lord unleashed ten plagues on the Egyptians. It was the tenth plague, the plague of the firstborn, which eventually persuaded the Pharaoh to let them go. However, 
he later changed his mind and sent his army in pursuit of the Israelites who were well over two million including women and children. Eventually they caught up with the Israelites as they were camping by the sea. The Israelites fearing for their lives cried out to the Lord who then parted the sea to help them walk through but then made the waters return and destroy by drowning all of the Pharaoh's pursuing army, his chariots and his horsemen. No one escaped. Friends, now by reminding the Israelites of the past during their captivity in Babylon, the Lord was giving them encouragement to trust in his power to make your way. Secondly, the Lord reminded the Israelites of the importance of looking forward, not backward. He says, Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago, consider not. See, I am doing something new, now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland reverse. Friends, remember means to call to mind to think of, to recollect. The Old Testament records of the times that the Lord had commanded the Israelites through Moses and others to remember and not to forget the effects of his actions in the wilderness and all his works on their behalf. The memory of these experiences became vital to their religious life. Moreover, the Lord had exhorted them to ensure that their children were also thoroughly taught about his deeds. But in today's text, we read that the same God had urged them not to remember the events of the past. Why? Friends, by the time of their exile, the Israelites had witnessed many great events, wonders, victories and hardships, turmoil and defeats. They gained freedom and were liberated from slavery in Egypt. Moses received God's law on their behalf. They conquered the land of Canaan and entered the promised land, battled with enemies and conquerors, built the temple of God, divided nations into the north and the south, and so on. Friends, while the Lord continued to be faithful to them by performing miracle after miracle and blessing them with many good things, yet they returned to him only evil things. They turned to the worship of idols. They abused the poor and ignored the needy. Their continued rebellion eventually led to their exile from the promised land. During the exile, they were in anguish because it seemed that God had turned away from his promises to their father Abraham. But God had neither lost his love for them nor had he abandoned them. Instead, through Isaiah, he held out the hand of hope. He instructed them to forget the past and look forward to the new manifestation of his power. Friends, in a sense, God was saying that they needed to leave behind their past, both failures and glories, and that they should not continue feeling sorry for themselves. Instead, they must get ready to welcome something new. In fact, they should be able to recognize it because it was already springing up in their midst. Thirdly, the Lord pointed out to them his unfailing power and strength to turn a seemingly impossible situation into a triumphant victory. Besides, his new manifestation would be something better, greater, grander and more magnificent than they had ever seen or experienced before. Friends, the Lord declares, In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers, wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches, for I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. Friends, in the desert there is commonly no path and water is scarce. But the Lord wanted the children of Israel to know that just as he had made a way for their ancestors, providing them with the overflowing streams of water to drink, besides manna in the desert that lay between Egypt and Canaan, 
he would also make a new way for them during their journey to their homeland and give them water to drink in the desert that lay between Babylon and Judea. Moreover, all of God's creation, including animals and all the chosen people of God, will participate in the benefits of the new thing. In return, they will all give their hearts to God completely by praising and honoring and worshipping Him. Friends, after 70 years of exile, this prophecy was fulfilled in 538 years before Christ, when Cyrus, the king of Persia, permitted the Israelites to return to their homeland and to rebuild the city plus the temple, for which he also gave them money. Friends, even though the temple was restored and God continued to dwell in the midst of the Israelites, it is actually considered to be a prefiguration of the even greater restoration, that of all the spiritual blessings and advantages in his heavenly kingdom, which God confers upon all his people in and through Jesus Christ, not only the Jews, but also the Gentiles. And at the same time, it also points to the prefiguration of the resurrection of all the dead. Friends, what is the message for us? Though these verses of Isaiah were written more than 2,500 years ago, and they were about the Israelites, they are just as relevant now as they were back then. Like the Israelites, in our sinfulness, we might sometimes find ourselves in exile, or in a place of desolation, or estranged from our friends and family members, or in one of the painful dark pits of life. But in those moments, we can do three things. 1. We can turn to God for His favor and His timing, instead of giving in to negative thoughts and feelings like anxiety, worry, fear, embarrassment, shame, helplessness, sadness and anger. 2. We can trust that God is ultimately in control of all things and at all times with the life unfolding according to His plan and purpose. 3. We can pray that the same God who had promised Abraham that he would look after his descendants, the God who had parted the Red Sea to help them escape from Egypt, who had stayed up King Cyrus to send them back to their homeland to rebuild the temple, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus will also work all things together in his name for his own glory and our good. Friends, remember, our God is still a God of love and mercy, who does not ever want to even those who reject Him to suffer forever. He loves us so passionately that, in His goodness, He offers us a way out of any situation that we are faced with. But the way He works is that He always does something new and extraordinary to show forth His glory. Friends, countless times He comes to our rescue perhaps even when we fail to ask. Therefore, on our part, we need to do only one thing. We need to get past the worst of the guilt and shame. We ought to forget the past bad decisions and sin, which keep us captive and instead repent for our sins and look forward to the new things God is preparing for us. Friends, God is always revealing many incredible things every day in nature and in our lives. When we look through the eyes of faith, we can see them. When we pray, when we worship, when we read and listen to His Word, we can sense the presence of His Spirit and see His manifold handiwork around us. We can know that we are His chosen people with incredible privileges and responsibilities and can also realize that we are being protected because we are made for Him and we are here to proclaim His praise. Amen. God bless you.